Welcome back to my little channel. Today I'm going to do something that I haven't done in a while. I'm going to talk about an article and respond to it rather than to report the news or talk about the lies of our environmentally betters. No, no, I'm going to talk about racism today. And I'm going to do that based on an article published on Medium written by Marley Kay. Now, who is Marley Kay, you'd say? Well, that's a very good question, and in all fairness, I wish I did not know. But, um, yeah, unfortunately I now do, and that's the life we have to live. It's alright though, it's not a big deal. But yeah, Marley Kay is, uh, I guess, a freelance writer on Medium, which is uh, all good and well, I guess. And there she gets to post her race-baiting rubbish. I'll... I'll let you see some of it it's okay it's not a big deal i mean she's trying to make sense of a senseless uh, trying to make sense of the senseless she is a teller of what she considers the truth and she has opinions which is okay i have opinions too but obviously she's a raceologist gods only know what that means and she's a lover of living well there you go girl good for you and she writes such interesting things as well some insulting things a lot of white people do which is the one that i'm going to respond to or we shouldn't have to say not all white people just like there are eight reasons for black people who should sue for injuries caused by racism but then again why are privileged children being exposed to violence and alcohol in school yeah every kid is never mind that Gems like this. Yeah, I know it's it's unfair to call them gems, but I don't know what to call them otherwise. And you'd understand, because let's be honest, no one knows what to call that. Um, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to say something smart, but nothing comes to mind. It's, it's rubbish. That's a good word. Let's call it rubbish. But today I'm going to respond to one of her videos because... This is race baiting at its finest, and we really should keep ourselves focused on this crap. We need to call it out, because this is what's damaging our society. It's the, well, but look at me, I'm a poor victim mentality, that basically pits one against the other. If it's okay to be black, it's okay to be white. If it's okay to be white, it's okay to be black. Are there people who are misbehaving towards you when you're white or black? Hell yes. Should we accept that shit? No, we shouldn't. But should we therefore say all people are racist? Well, I don't think so. And if that's the case, then let's be honest. She's an American. In America, there are more black racists than white racists, apparently, because there are more black murderers of white people than there are white murderers of black people. But let's, let's not point that out. Because... Not all black people, which, in all fairness, I agree with. But hey, if it's not all black people, then why is it not right to say not all white people? We'll get back to that, I promise you. It's, it's, it's a little bit cringy, and I'm really not sure whether I should make this one, but I'm going to do it anyway. Glutton for punishment and all that. Anyway... Some insulting things a lot of white people do. Not not some white people. No, a lot of them. This is common behavior amongst white people. Well, let's go where we see. That. First off, say not all white people. Yes, yes, she knows we're not blaming all white people. Yeah, but but instead of all, you now say a lot. That's that's any better. Just as if you know a lot of white people. Seriously. Um, this is crap. And no, I'm not going to read your article on why not all white people is a valid response to things, even though you don't mean all white people. This is... The, you start off with showing what a frigging racist you are. But to, 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 to lessen the damage a little bit... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no not, not all. Just, just a lot of them. Bah. Hijacking movements. I'm not even going to go there. Yes, I am. 
the civil right movement protected blacks no it didn't just protect blacks it came up for civil rights see that's the thing now it seemed like it was only about black people because black people were discriminated against but you know what there were lots of white people that were discriminated against too or hispanics or chinese or mm, all of the different ones now martin luther king was a great man and he tried to pull everything beyond the ethnicity of people so why the hell are you trying to pull it back to the ethnicity of people yeah but but white girls then drag everything and, and and no not white girls women because let's be honest white women are still not as entitled as black women are in america so seriously and hashtag not all i understand sure why the hell not but you're a perfect example of a black woman trying to have her cake and eat it too seriously either it's everyone or it's a group and you're trying to make it about the group the civil rights movement was supposed to be for everyone. Now, were black people treated worse in America at the time? Yeah, well, worse than some white people? Definitely. Worse than Chinese? Worse than Koreans? Worse than Indians? Do you know where I'm going with this? Do you understand? So, they did not hijack the civil movement. Hell, the only reason the civil movement was so effective was because there were white people being part of the civil movement. And Me Too wasn't for black girls. Bloody hell. Me Too was started fucking France. Never mind that. Locking the doors when black people walk by your cars. Now, I'm pretty sure some people do that. I can understand why some people do that considering the amount of crime coming from a small group of black people are there for all black people to blame no but should black people then realize why other people not just white people lock the doors yeah you know the thing is there's a reason stereotypes exist stereotypes are not just made out of well i don't like that person therefore i think badly of them no, no there's a component of truth to every stereotype I, funny enough, what's his name? There was this 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 comedian. I forgot his name. Chris Rock, I think, who was talking about how people say that the media is making people think badly about black people. But when he's out at night going to an ATM, he's looking over his shoulder and he's not looking for the media to make sure that they're not there. Enough said. Clutching your purse when I walk by. Well, I'm pretty sure it might happen to some black people as it does to some white people how do i know it happens to some white people i'm a big burly dude with long hair and a beard and it looks a little bit scruff no not scruffy rough it looks a little bit rough so yeah i know what she's talking about <laughs> sometimes i chuckle sometimes i just nod and say good day when they do so and that's it this has nothing to do with black people. This has, this has to do with people being afraid. And you know what? Them being afraid says nothing about you. You being upset about people being afraid does say something about you. If you're never ever thinking of robbing them, then why do you care them holding their purses? You should be friendly and keep walking. And the next time when they see you and start recognizing you, they might not clutch their purses because they are no longer afraid. People are afraid of everyone. And unfortunately, in America, there's a good reason to be afraid of black people. Mind you, I don't think there's a good reason to be afraid of black women. Then again, if they walk in packs. Tony, so uh, Tommy Sotomayor made, 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 made great videos about the BT-1000. So, yeah, if you're one of those, maybe that's the reason. Not moving on the sidewalk. I know you see me, right? They made normal sidewalks for two people to walk on in two different directions at the same time. Why do you all feel I need to move for you? Especially women. Yeah, because that only happens to black women passing white people it never happens to black people passing black people white people passing white people see where i'm going with this one stop your entitlement seriously 
And it, it, it's kind of funny because part two of the same point, blocking aisles in stores, I know you see me trying to get by. Yeah, again, this happens. And, and, and this is not an ethnical thing. This is not because people hate people of a certain ethnicity. Hell, ask your white friends if they have the same shit happen to them when they're... Yeah, what I'm asking. Of course you don't have any white friends. Never mind. And not moving when I say excuse me. Yeah, because that only happens to black people. That never happens to anyone else. You're not at all entitled, are you? Act like our saviors on the interweb. Now, this is something I can somewhat understand. I know you're used to saving us. Many of you have been taught early white people need to correct us non-white people because we are genetically inferior. No, not genetically. No one says genetically, by the way. It's, it's your point. Uh, culturally, perhaps. I mean, your behavior is definitely inferior. You're, you're, you're thriving on a victimhood complex. That's, that's in all fairness, that is inferiority. Look at me, I'm the poor victim. Anyway, that's not a genetical thing. It's a cultural thing. We have our minds, we have our thoughts, we can see your actions and behavior differently. Yeah, yeah, sure you do. Can you see your own actions, by the way? Because that's what makes individuals individuals, being aware of not only how people perceive you, but also how you are in any way responsible for that perception. Some of us don't see you as survivors at all. Well, that's a good thing because I don't want to be a survivor. Sorry, survivor. Oh, look at me. Savior. I don't want to be a savior. I see black people as my equals. They don't need me to save them. At the same time, I will call out bullshit like this because I don't need them to berate me for things I did not do. White people will flip out on us in a heartbeat. Like as soon as we call them out for their racism or centering whiteness. And um, how do black people act when we call them out for their racism? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, um, that's probably not ever happening, right? Hmm. Closing the door in my face. It doesn't matter if you're in a hurry and so, but blah, blah, blah. I'm still coming into the place behind you. Your racist little microaggression. I guess that's the word of the day, microaggression. Don't go unnoticed. It signals you don't respect me and you are not conscious of my being because I'm not white. We get the picture. Yeah, because no one ever did the same thing to a white person. Not a white person did that to another white person. Not a black person did that ever to a white... What the hell are you on about? Seriously. People rush through doors in my uh, place as well. Or try to close the lift doors when they see me approaching. So fucking what? Why do you have to make yourself out to be a victim in this? Why do you have to make this a racist thing? Do you think it only happens with white people? <sighs> Show their children anything non-white is bad or strange. Yeah, okay, I'm not even going to read that point. Um, how many black people are there basically telling their children not to befriend white people? Because I've seen that a lot too. Again, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm saying it's not a white or bad thing. It's an us versus them thing. And all you're doing is promoting the us versus them thinking. So instead of telling them, oh, you shouldn't do this, you should ask people, why are they doing this? And then let them tell you. And then you have a conversation. But you don't do that. You already start berating. Heaven forbid I speak or smile. I doubt that that's the case, because if you indeed speak in a friendly way or smile, people might not be worried as much. <sighs> Don't listen, can't hear either. Yeah, this is true for us versus them thinking as well. You don't listen to anyone except white people. Well, you don't listen to anyone except black people. Oh, sorry, that's not true. You don't listen to anyone except black people or white people who agree with you. 
even if they are wrong, because you only respect the voices and views of people with the same views as you. See, I don't have to change a lot of words in your sentence to make it all about you. When non-white people try to tell you how we feel, just be quiet and listen. Now, there is something I do agree with. This is, by the way, something liberals tend to do a lot, to talk for other people. That's a bad thing. But um, at the same time, I guess Marley is a liberal because guess what she's doing here? Let's continue. Rewrite history. Some white people never see what black people see, and they always have a different version of our national history, especially how this nation treated non-white people. Yeah, you know, the thing is, do you know where the term white came from? No, not so much white. I think the, the term was wasp. White Anglo-Saxon person. Everything else wasn't considered white. The Irish weren't considered white. The Germanic people, the Slavic people, the Italian people, the Spanish people, none of them were considered white. Only the English considered themselves white. So, um, yeah, that's funny, though, because when you talk about white people, that's not who you're talking about. You're talking about all of those groups. And the thing is, they always have a different version of our national history. No, no, it's, it's, it's you or people like you, black or white, because let's be honest, that have a different version of our national history. I mean, you have your mouth full of black slavery. Fair enough. This was a problem. About, what, 300,000 black slaves were brought to the place we now know the United States of America to be. There were far more white slaves brought to America, but you're not to mention that. You're not to point that out. How dare you? That's a different version of our national history. Yeah, but the thing is, that version is the reality. The first chattel owner of a black slave was a black man. Funny enough, that's also true. And before that, all slaves in America were considered how do you call that, um, indentured servitude. So you were a slave for seven years, and then you were a free man. It could be a bit longer, but usually it's about seven years. This was true for the Irish, this was true for the Italian, this was true for the Polish, this was true for the black people who were saved on the seas from the Portuguese slave traders or the Jewish slave traders or whoever the slave traders were. Funny enough, the English Navy fought against those slave traders to end slavery. But that's a whole different story. That happened later, by the way. That didn't happen at this point in time, because at this point in time, they just fought with each other to be dominant of the seas. Um, we're talking about, what, 1700s, whereas the end of slavery was... 1860 something like that yeah, a little bit earlier than that i'm sorry i might have my numbers a little bit skewed by the way did you know how many black armies fought to end slavery now there have been black revolts to end slavery for example haiti is a great story everyone loves to talk about how the blacks rioted in haiti to free themselves so um, after they freed themselves who else did they free you are correct. No one. So it's only white people that fought to end slavery in places that weren't for white people. It's, it's kind of funny because there were quite a few African kingdoms that weren't, by the way, white protectorates or colonies that made a lot of money off the slave trade. And they were pretty pissed that the English started to stop them from trading slaves overseas because, hey, that's a source of money gone. This is not the rewriting of history. This is history. Why can't you see this? Well, obviously you can't see this because it doesn't fit your narrative. Talk to us disrespectfully online. Well, then stop being a disrespectful cunt. I'm sorry, I'm not even going to go into that one. Put money over humanity. Many white people choose their money over humanity. Yes, because black rich people don't do that at all. Oprah Winfrey is known for her uh, philanthropy. Oh, the world was so much better under Barack Obama. He really gave a lot of money to... He, personally, gave a lot of money to black people, didn't he? Yeah, right. 
ask me to trust you. You consistently ask me to trust you and your leadership choices when you know they don't care about me or my issues. Okay, this is funny because this is a democracy thing or rather a democratic party thing. That's why a lot of black people have been saying, well, then start voting Republican because in the Republican Party, they actually try to do something for you. Funny enough, Marley has already made an article why being a Republican is a bad thing. At the same time, she's blaming about trusting leadership. No, no, you know what? You're right. White people should not ask you to trust them for leadership. Go to places controlled by black people. I'm not even saying leave America. No, no, go to Baltimore. Go to Chicago. Most of the leaders there are, are black people. See where I'm going with this one? Now, there are other places that have black leadership. Don't get me wrong. Um, there's a difference between Republican black leadership and Democratic Party black leadership. Um, once, once you get through that one, let's talk again. But you won't because it goes against what you want. Strongly suggest who we vote for. <laughs> Didn't we just talk about that one? See, that's the thing. You are pissed that you can't trust someone, but you're also pissed that people advise you to, to then not trust those people, but trust other people. But then you're like, no, how dare you? <sighs> Forget my name. Funny how you can remember the pretty white girl's name and face, but me, not so much. I guess that's because you're not a pretty girl. That probably has to do something with it. Uh, in all fairness, though, I can't even remember the name of pretty girls because I can't be asked to remember names. No, that's not true. It's not that I can't be asked. Because funny enough, after I meet a person, I can remember everything I know about that person but the name. It's, it's, it's somewhat of a defect of mine. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people may have that problem too. It's not to be nasty. It's just that names are not always the first thing people remember. And you remember us. Well, that's nice. I'm pretty sure you've never met me before, so I'm pretty sure you won't remember me. Anyway, asking me for help when I'm trying to... Shopping. Asking me for help when I'm trying to shopping. Asking you for help when I'm trying... Sh I'm sorry, but... I mean, I'm not English. To me, English is a second language. So maybe to you, English is a second language too. But try to do English better, especially when you write it down because people read it. You know, have someone proofread your shit or something. I mean, there are a lot of people, well, a few hundred people that read this. So someone should have pointed this out. I'm not the help. No, no. When you're in a shop... And someone asks you, can, can, can you get that for me, please? I can't reach it. Or you're standing in front of it. Then, then the best response indeed is to say, Oi, I'm not your help. It's not just reaching out, grabbing it and giving it to the person and say, there you go. That's, that's absolutely wrong. No, no, you should point out you're not the help. See where you're going with this one as well. See, the thing is, people sometimes ask other people for something it's, it's not even that interesting. Now, if someone come to you and asks you, like, okay, can you pay that for me? Eh, somewhat different. I'll go with you on that one. But um, if they think you might know something, then, yeah. Then... But, see, that's the thing, though. Asking you for help is a sign that they feel you're stupid. Something like that. Bah. Please stop white splaining. I know what I think. I know how to speak. <laughs> you know how to speak. That was it again. Asking me for help when I'm trying to shopping. Yeah, you know how to speak, all right. <laughs> I know what I want to say. You see, I agree with that. If if you want to say something and someone interprets that in a wrong way, that's that's nasty. But um, isn't that what you've been doing with most of the points you're making? Interpreting how people act and therefore explaining why they do something and feel offended by it. See, 
the double standard is 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 palpable backstabbing and ignoring me in the workplace i have never worked on a job where white women haven't stabbed me in the back stole my ideas sabotaged my non-profit or undermined me when i was a supervisor well i can't talk for your lived experience but considering the rest of your points i'm uh, pressing x to doubt <laughs> never mind but yeah, no, I mean, if people always talk bad about you or always talk down to you, that's 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 a problem. It is. It shouldn't be made positive. At the same time, if this always happens to you on different locations, there's, there's an old trick I used to do when, when at work and, and kids were feeling they had a lot of problems with this one and that one. I started to make it, them create... Not a diagram, but, um, you know, make circles for every person that, that wrongs you and, and start drawing lines. And how many lines go where? Do those lines go to other people as well? Or do they always only go to you? Because if they always only go to you, the problem aren't the other people. If you always, no matter where you go, have problems with other people, the other people are not the cause. Just saying. Suspect and harass us. I'm riding on the elevator and here comes elevator Ellen telling another white woman on the elevator she needed to be careful. Um, ain't I a woman? We can hardly do anything. See, the thing is, I, I can understand where you're coming from on this one, Marley, and, and it's annoying and I can understand it. I mean, I've never attacked another man or woman as far as I can remember, but hey, my looks and all that people kind of have assumptions this is true for you as well those assumptions are based on something in america for example 13 percent of the population are responsible for 50 percent of the violent crime now that 13 percent just happens to be of a certain ethnicity obviously i can point out what ethnicity that is but everyone knows so never mind that now that does not mean you are part of the percentage and i think i done the calculations once it's yes 13 percent of the population is of a certain ethnicity but it's only about one or two percent that is causing all this crime of that 13 percent so it's not two percent out of 300 million no no 13 percent of 300 million and two percent of those 13 percent so that 13 percent should then be seen as 100 percent and out of those 100 percent two percent it's it's a minority group within the minority group so to speak but they are so very active so incredibly very active that yeah i'm sorry do you want people to stop being afraid of black people in america then try to get your brothers and sisters to stop being criminals and it's unfair of me to ask i understand because obviously the vast majority of black people aren't criminals but the ones that are, are so much overrepresented that that is the cause why people are careful. And, and let's be honest, um, there are more black women attacking white women than we'd like to admit. Isn't it true? Ignore the diversity and inclusion in if you created. Nothing pisses... Yeah, that was bad English, sorry of me. Nothing pisses me off more than white people creating work, place and program initiatives to bring more diversity and incursion than you all undermine your own diversity and inclusion efforts by engaging in tokenism and allowing white people to be overtly racist without being checked. See, that's the problem with the bigotry of low expectations. They shouldn't even start with those bloody programs. I don't even understand why you're in favor of those programs. Because if you have a diversity hire, you're implying that that person is hired because of diversity, not because that person knows how to do the bloody job. I, uh, personally, I have a problem with diversity and inclusion initiatives as well, but I have a problem with it because I think it makes people second-class citizens 
Well, I mean, we could hire a good guy or a good woman, but let's hire a black woman. That's what happens when you start bringing in quotas. And the same is true for women, by the way. We have women quotas now, so we can hire someone who's good at the job or we can hire a woman. That's what you're saying. That's not tokenism. You, you, you're inviting tokenism by actually saying, oh, yeah, we should have these program and initiatives and inclusion programs and blah, blah, blah. You're questioning your own value by doing that. You should be dead set against those programs. You should want to be hired on your merit and your merit alone. But then again, there's not a lot of uh, victim points to be had in being valuable. Engaging in tokenism in television and entertainment. If I had a dollar for every time I was a television show with a truckload of white people and only one little black or brown person. Okay, let's let's be honest. If you watch a television show with a cast of more than 10 primary characters, then that's a huge show. And even if they had more than 10 primary characters let's say well no you know what let's say 10 let's say 10 if you want an honest representation if you have 10 primary characters at best there's only one black person in there because let's be honest black people are 13 percent of society so that's one in 10 isn't it but no we have to pander to black people we have to pander to trans people which are less than one percent of society we have to trend Panda to gay people, which are this, this, you're invoking tokenism. You want tokenism, and then you're complaining about tokenism. Do you realize what? Of course, you're not realizing. Never mind. I'll continue. Appropriate our culture. Many of you hate our black and brown skins, but you love our words, slang, music, foods, and styles. Nothing burns me up than seeing your children disrespecting and fearing us, saying we're bad, but you'll allow to wear the same clothes, hat. Uh, okay, so you don't want to integrate and you're angry when people try to integrate with you. Is that what you're saying here? I'm just asking because this will make absolutely no sense. You teach them it's okay to cross the line to look like they hang around black kids but they don't really have to they don't really have to sorry bad english of me funny how we're bad for you until we're good for you now you see the problem with this whole art no not the whole art well yes whole article but this place this alinea appropriate a culture see that's the thing you can also appreciate a culture but where it's okay for you to do things that are considered to be white people's culture by people like you, it's not okay for white people to do black people culture things. And there you have it. How dare you be like us? Oh, we, we can do whatever you do, but how dare you be like us? See, you are trying to be the victim and the superior one both in the same go get scared if too many black people are in any space you're in well i can go back to that one but this is an us versus them thing again depends really i mean depends on how they got there depends on um, how those black people got there get some therapy yeah maybe you should um, follow your own advice this is, um... see, the thing is, the problem is not being in a space with lots of black people, because I've been in spaces with lots of black people a lot of times. But the black people I was in one space with are culturally my peers. So I know I don't have to fear them, just like they know they don't have to fear me. Now, the problem becomes when I'm in a group of people that are not culturally my peers. Like, people who say black lives matter and kill whitey are there black people who do that oh well luckily not a lot where i am from but in america that's um 
it's a common thing, really. I can give you a list of, of hell, people actually make YouTube videos saying to kill whitey, kill your babies. Uh, not me saying that. So I can understand that there are white people who will then be in a group of those people that they'd be quite reluctant to be in. That's nothing to do with racism. That's just common sense. As a white person, I probably won't do well with a group of black Hebrew Israelites, just like a white person might have a problem with being in a Black Lives Matter movement and then feeling like, wait, wait a second, don't all lives matter? Anyway, not speak when I live in your neighborhood. Not speak when I live in your neighborhood. I'm uh, English, you should try it sometimes. I know many of you hate to see us move into your little neighborhood still in 2020 because you've been taught we make your community value go down. No, no, depends. I mean, there are black people who do not make the value go down. It's, 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 it's kind of the same that there are white people who make the value go down too. If you bring the wrong people into a neighborhood, it's a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing, nothing else. Then again, let's be honest, um, white people moving into areas where black people go, gentrification, racism. White people moving out of a place where black people go, white flight, racism. S see where this is going? White people are fucked whether they do or whether they don't. So stop blaming people for whatever you feel you want to blame them. And of course, the white people thinks is much longer than this, but I just have to stop because people have short attention spans. No, because you're probably not being able to maintain this level of double standards for as long as you already did. Yeah, that's just unfair of me. That's just me filling in. But let's be honest, this whole article was white people bad because they do stuff I don't like. And I can understand you. I seriously can. But instead of saying, okay, what can I do to change the world? You're saying, what do other people have to do to change the world? When are you going to be responsible for the life you live, Marty? When are you going to be responsible for the people you hang around with, Marty? Be the change you want to see in others. Don't demand the change of others so that you can claim that they need to change. It's, it's, it's double, my dear Marley, but if it's okay to be black, but it's not okay to be white, then you are part of the problem. With that, I've been going on for almost 40 minutes now. My God, um, people... If you've seen this to the end, I'm, uh, I applaud you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hear any criticism. And um, like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I won't usually do these long forms, but um, I, this, this, this one felt I needed to do. Because this is the problem of our Western society. We have people within our Western society doing everything they can to destroy the societies they live in, the societies in which they thrive. And I want them to thrive. Don't get me wrong. I want everyone in the Western society to be successful, whether they're black, white, Chinese, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. But I want them to be part of our community. I want them to be part of our culture. And here we have someone who is dead set on making sure that she's not part of our common culture. And she's blaming others for not wanting to be part of our common culture. Marty, my dear, I would love to give you a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with me, but you won't. That's okay. I understand. To see where we can help each other. Because I'm not perfect, so I may make mistakes as well. But let's be honest, 
you're not perfect either. And instead of just saying, well, white people do this, therefore all white people, well, not all, just, just most, not all, just most, is um, kind of like saying, well, yeah, no, no, I might put my hand in the fire and it burns me, but it's not my fault, it's the fire because it's so hot. And the fire doesn't care, by the way, just, just letting you know. And we are reaching a point where white people don't care either. Because of the race baiting by like people like 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 you are doing right now, you are creating a wedge in our society. Could you please stop doing that? Because the only thing that this can lead to is people standing up against other people. And let's be honest, this is already happening. There are lots of black people who specifically target white people for being white. And the more white people start realizing this, the more white people are saying, you know what, maybe we should start doing the same thing. And people like you are accelerating those processes. Could you please stop? It would be better if we could find a way to be one society again. Preferably before the racists get the overhand. And in the black community, the races have the overhand. They are the larger part. That's not true. Not all black people are racist. I know that's not what I'm saying. I said they're the largest group. I'm not saying they're the only group. And it depends. I mean, there are lots of black people that work and live in white neighborhoods. And we only call them white because we have to give it a name for some reason. But if we look at places like Chicago or Baltimore... Yeah, I'm not going to finish that point. You know what? I hope to see you all next time.